You know what? It's time for a big block Chevy head shootout. Part one, oval ports. In this video, we compared no less than eight different sets of oval port big block Chevy cylinder heads, both on the airflow bench and on the dyno. That way we could correlate the airflow numbers to the power numbers. Doing all this, do we find out what the best set of cylinder heads are for your big block buildup? Probably not. Did we find out there's a lot of good cylinder heads for that buildup? Definitely. Let's get to our test motor, check out those results. Before we could run our cylinder head test, we needed a test motor. So we built a suitable 454, actually a 468, it was a 60 over 454, to really take advantage of what the cylinder heads had to offer, you know, in terms of flow. So our 468 was a 60 over with forged rods and forged pistons, and we put a dome piston, you know, your kind of typical 18 to 20 cc dome piston, get the compression up, and it also had valve release to add so that we could run a reasonable camshaft in this. We selected a hydraulic roller cam. It was a comp. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. You can take a look at it. But, you know, it's a good size uh, hydraulic roller cam. We didn't step all the way up to a solid, which we will do in part two when we build the 496 to test the rec port heads. All of the heads tested here were oval port heads. So we had a good, healthy short block with a healthy camshaft in it. And we ran all of the cylinder heads with roller rockers. Now, naturally, we had to adjust the length of all the push rods to get the contact patch right on the valve tip. We adjusted the push rod so that we had a good contact patch right in the center of the valve during the, you know, actuation of the valve. We also installed an Edelbrock Victor Jr. intake, a Holley 950 XP carburetor, a good oiling system, and MSD distributor. Now, the first head that we tested to serve as our baseline was a set of peanut port heads. And I know what you guys are thinking, well, why didn't you try a standard oval port? Well, the reason that we did that was back in the day when we ran this test, the most common head that we would find, the most common big block we'd find in the wrecking yard was actually a peanut port combination. It was the, it was the Gen 5 stuff. So that's what we started with. And besides, we wanted to use a set of oval port heads also in ported form, the 049, kind of the go-to cylinder head for the oval port stuff. We wanted to use that as one of the test pieces and we let uh, Bryce over there, Dr. J, pour it up a set and he did a good job. So this is our combination, this is our 468. We equipped it first with the peanut port heads. They had been surfaced, they had a valve job. They were basically about as good as you could get for a peanut port head. We got naturally, they all had a valve spring package to work with that particular camshaft, so there was no concern there. Equipped with our peanut port heads, our 468, which was about 10 to 1 compression, produced 511 horsepower and 514 foot-pounds of torque. As you can see, since it produced more torque than it produced horsepower, there's definitely a flow limitation here. And that's pretty standard for the peanut port head. They're, they don't flow a ton, but you can make reasonable power. I mean, we made over 500 horsepower with the peanut port head and a good camshaft. But here's what happened when we installed our first set of heads. Which, which were the 049s ported by the guys over at Dr. J's, by Bryce and those guys over there. And as you can see, it made about the same torque down low as the peanut port head, but because the additional flow rate, and I'm going to go ahead and show you the flow rates of all of the heads, give you specs on them and stuff. I'll go ahead and post those up when we, when we show the test for each one. So I'll put that stuff up here. But if we take a look, the oval port heads pick power up. Equipped with those oval port heads, the power output jumped to 576 horsepower. Peak torque not only increased, it shifted out a little higher to 538 foot-pounds of torque. So a good combination. You know, oval port heads work well. They make good power, especially when they're ported. Let's get to our next head. After testing the, the ported factory 049 heads from Dr. J's, we decided to install a set of basically low-cost aluminum heads from the guys over at Speedmaster. I mean, these kind of things are real popular. Obviously, guys want to save money and do what they can, so they want to find out how well these low-buck heads work. So we installed a set of ASCAST 320cc port oval port heads from the guys at Speedmaster, and here's how they did. As you can see, uh, you know, pretty decent gains compared to the factory peanut port heads equipped with the Speedmaster Pro Comp heads. They produce 554 horsepower and 527 foot-pounds of torque. The thing that I liked, it was nice that even though the these were much bigger ports than the factory peanut port heads, they improved power even down low, down here, you know, even below 3,000 RPM, which is always a good combination. The torque area here right in the middle of this plateau area that was kind of the same, and I'll go ahead and put the specs up for the Pro Comp 320 head so you guys can take a look at that stuff. We want to try to have the specs for all the heads so you guys can look at that because there's always questions and comments about that. So take a look at that stuff. 
you know, pretty decent gains, uh, low cost. That's why a lot of guys buy it. Let's take a look at our next set of hits. Our next set of heads for the big block test came from TrickFlow, and TrickFlow offers a number of different cylinder heads for the big block. These particular heads for this combination were the 280 power oval head, so a 280cc intake port, oval port as cast head, and they work really well. Let's check out and see how those heads did. So equipped with the TrickFlow 280 power oval heads, our big block, our 468, produced 573 horsepower and 544 foot-pounds of torque and you know we got good gains even even in the middle part of the curve we didn't rev it or run it down as low on this particular test and I can't remember why but um, we were showing gains even down at 3500 rpm and it showed on the load in at least that we we're probably going to be doing better than the oval port heads even down low but I like this gain you know so we picked up You know, what's that, over over 60 horsepower with the head swap? So I'll go ahead and show you the specs here, as we always do with each of these heads. Put the specs up for these uh, Power Oval 280 heads from TrickFlow. Good combination. Uh, TrickFlow does, you know, they do good stuff. It's available through Summit. You can get it pretty inexpensively, which is nice. These heads work really well. So it's a good upgrade for, you know, this size motor. Good for a mild combination. Let's take a look at our next set of heads. The next set of heads we installed on our 468 Big Block Chevy came from Brodex. Brodex makes lots of good stuff. We use a ton of their stuff. And these are a set of race right oval port heads. And as we've come to expect from their stuff, it works very well. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here so you guys can check that out. Obviously, we've got all the airflow data of all these. That's very important. Guys want to look at that because even with this combination, we're not taking advantage of everything that these heads have to offer. I mean, a lot of these heads will support, you know, another 100 horsepower compared to the stuff that we're testing. So there's plenty of flow left in a lot of these, but equipped with our Brodex race ride heads, our 468 produced 588 horsepower, 588.6, so 589. You can tell your friends, 589 horsepower and 553 foot-pounds of torque, so good torque. And as you notice, most of these heads improve power uh, by a lot out at the top which is kind of what we expect from additional airflow and they tend to shift where we make peak torque a little bit higher and they increase peak torque so more peak torque a little higher rpm all that's good stuff these broda trace right heads work re really well again we put the specs up so you can check all that stuff out let's take a look at our next heads next up on our cylinder head shootout or well, more accurately probably a cylinder head test is a set of heads from dark so Dart Pro 1 oval port heads. This is our, uh, as always, 468 with the peanut port heads. And here's what happened after we installed our Dart ASCAS oval port heads. Again, you know, Dart, they make really good stuff. These were no exceptions. Equipped with the Dart heads, and I'll go ahead and put the specs up here so you can see the airflow numbers and see these, these heads, like a lot of them, have a lot more potential. You can take a look at the chamber volume, all that stuff. 592 horsepower. And peak torque checked in at 554 foot-pounds of torque. So good combination. Um, equaled the torque output at 4,100 of the peanut port heads. And then probably was a little better down low. We kind of had a dip there. But either way, I mean, you're not going to, the thing's already making over 500 foot-pounds, so you're not going to notice that that's going to be a good amount. Uh, you're probably going to have traction issues down low, as would be kind of typical with any kind of, like, healthy big block which this thing definitely qualifies as so our dart oval port heads work very well on our big block another good combination what we'll see and i think we'll find out and we'll get over get to that in the uh, conclusion is there there's lots of good heads here lots of good choices let's get to our next cylinder head. next up on the big block was a set of heads from edelbrock and these were performer rpm xt heads i'll go ahead and put the specs up here as always you guys can take a look at the airflow data these were actually cnc ported heads so these were a pretty good combination still oval port heads or roval as a lot of guys like to call them and the the first thing you notice is if you take a look at the big drop in power down here that's not the power falling off that's actually a valve spring problem um the this particular set of heads we ran the valve springs that were supplied to the heads but it needs more valve spring for our camshaft and for that RPM range. So if you're going to run this thing to 6,500 or 7,000 RPM, definitely invest in more valve spring. But equipped with these Edelbrock heads, 
R468 finally exceeded 600 horsepower, 600.6 or 601 horsepower. Torque was a, a good amount too, 552 foot-pounds. And the heads made basically a little more power than the peanut port heads all the way through the curve. So they were a good head, lots of power. And then as we saw, if you take a look at the airflow numbers, lots more potential, especially if you upgrade the valve spring. And that's one of the problems when I do a lot of these cylinder head tests. I've done them for Fords and for LSs and big blocks, small blocks. One of the things that we have to look at are the valve springs. The, the factories all seem to be fairly conservative on the valve springs that they supply with the heads. So if you're going to put them on, make sure that you have enough valve spring for your combination. Let's get to our next cylinder head. The final set of heads run on our big block Chevy were oddly enough, other than the factory peanut port heads, were the smallest. And it just goes to show you that although we all grew up thinking that you had to have a rec port head on a big block Chevy to make big power because all the factory stuff, you know, the rec port head was the high performance one and the oval port was a low performance one. The reality is the motor does not care about the shape of the port. In fact, if we take a look at this test, our final set of heads came from Airflow Research. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. Not only were they oval port heads, but they were, other than the peanut port heads, the smallest oval port head that we had in terms of CCs. These were oval port, these were AFR 265 heads, which is fairly small for an oval port head. But as you can see, they were small in port <laughs> volume, but not small in horsepower. These things produced uh, 613 horsepower, 614 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 559 foot-pounds. These things, obviously, if you take a look at the specs, uh, had the right size chamber and stuff. They had a lot of things going for them. And the Airflow Research guys, they know how to make power, just like a lot of the other guys, Brodex and Edelbrock. You know, it's pretty easy to make uh, power with a big block. But I think it's important to note, small chamber, oval port, but we're making a ton of power. So, again, don't get confused. <laughs> high performance, like high horsepower big blocks, don't have to have rec port heads. Oval port heads work really well, and we'll see this kind of continue when we test the rec port heads on the bigger 496, because we snuck in a set of oval port heads there, and as they have, they work pretty well. Let's get to our conclusion. So what do we learn from this comparison on the big block Chevy heads, both on the airflow bench and on the dyno? Well, I learned two things. First of all, it doesn't take rec port heads to make big power on a big block. In fact, it can be argued that a lot of these oval port heads make more power than a bigger rec port head would on this combination. The next thing is oval port heads, good. Lots of different oval port heads available to make that power even better. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Thanks for watching. I'll keep testing. Part two coming up, rec port heads on a 496.